Lesson 12.3c, using a simulation to make a prediction. This is for compound events. We can use a simulation or model of an experiment to find the experimental probability of compound events. Now, we talked about experimental probability in 12.2a and 12.2b. We talked about simulation in 12.2c. And we talked about compound events in the previous two videos, 12.3a and 12.3b. If you do not understand these words, you need to go back to these previous videos, and I'll have them linked in the description of this video to make it easy for you. We can simulate or model an experiment for compound events by using a combination of number cubes, spinners, playing cards, bag of numbers or colors, or coins. At a sandwich shop, customers choose either a 6-inch or 12-inch sandwich with a side order of chips, a piece of fruit, or a salad. There's about an equal number of 6-inch and 12-inch sandwiches sold with about an equal number of side choices. Use a simulation to find the experimental probability that the next customer will choose a 6-inch sandwich with a piece of fruit. Now, since there's about an equal number of probability, we can flip a coin and use a three-color spinner for our simulation. These models will work because it's equally likely that we'll get heads or tails, and there's an equal number of probability on our sandwiches and sides, and on our spinner, we have the same size sections for each of them, so it's very fair. So we choose our model, which is the coin flip and the spinner, and we can assign H for heads, which will be a 6-inch sandwich, T for tails, which will be a 12-inch sandwich, so the coin is going to help us choose whether it's going to be a 6-inch or 12-inch sandwich. The spinner is going to help us decide if R for red, which will be chips, B for blue will be the fruit, and Y for yellow will be the salad. Now we find the sample space for the compound event. We have heads red, which is going to give us a 6-inch sandwich with chips. We have heads blue, which is going to give us a 6-inch sandwich with fruit, heads yellow, which will give us a 6-inch sandwich with salad, and tails red, tails blue, tails yellow. There are two sides to the coin. There are three colors on the spinner. Our sample space would be 2 times 3, 2 times 3, which is equal to 6 possible outcomes. Next, we perform the simulation. So let's say a coin was tossed and the spinner spun 20 times, and the results are shown in the table. Now, we find the experimental probability. It's going to be the probability of a 6-inch sandwich plus fruit. That's going to be the frequency of the compound event 2 to the total number of trials, which is 20. That's all of the numbers total. We have 2 twentieths, which simplifies to 1 tenth. So based on the simulation, the experimental probability is one-tenth that the next order will be a six-inch sandwich and fruit. Using our simulation, we can predict the number of six-inch sandwiches with fruit for the next 100 orders. For 20 trials, that's 20 orders, our ratio is two twentieths, which simplified to one-tenth. So for 100 trials, that would be 100 orders, we find an equivalent ratio to 1 tenth. We have 1 tenth, and we need to multiply this by 10. We need to multiply the numerator by the same thing. We have 10 hundredths. We can write it as a decimal as 0 0.10, and we don't need this trailing 0, do we? We can write it as 0 0.1. It's also 10%, which tells us 10 out of 100 of the next orders will be 6-inch sandwiches and fruit. To find the probability of a compound event using data recorded from an experiment or simulation, we find the total number of trials as our denominator. We find the number of occurrences of the compound event as the numerator. The experimental probability is the ratio of the number of occurrences to the total number of trials. So for the ratio, the numerator is the quantity in one cell, the denominator is the total of all the cells, and as we discussed before, we can 
total all the cells by adding the rows, and that will equal 20 in this case, or we can add the columns, which will also equal 20. We get 2 twentieths, which simplifies to 1 tenth. We're finished with lesson 12.3. We're going to be moving on to 12.4, but we're still going to be talking about experimental probability. So the next lesson, using experimental probability to make a prediction. As I stated in the beginning of the video, it's very important you understand the terminology, the vocabulary, as we move forward. Go back and watch these videos again or check your notes to make sure you completely understand their meaning. Have a great day and join me for the next lesson. Bye.